Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech Ask, where you use hashtag AskGMBNTech down in the comments and we try and answer them for you. So let's get straight into it, shall we? Um, Joshi says, hashtag AskGMBNTech. I've uh, been thinking of going tubeless, but the price is a bit steep for me. I've uh, been thinking of going duct tape and cheap AliExpress valves. Okay, um, which would cost me less than 10 euros, uh, but the sealant would put the price up um, as much, let's say, with muck off. Um, I did see somewhere that you can use condensed milk. Uh, so would you say about condensed milk um, and some glitter? <laughs> uh, would it be much cheaper? Um, than sealant. Uh, yeah, it might be much cheaper than sealant, but if that goes off, that's gonna smell bad. I'm not sure I'd want that in my tires. Um, and, and glitter doesn't necessarily work better in filling holes. Um, I would say it's all about the sealant. That's what really fills holes. Um, and there's no point scrimping on that because, you know, that's the whole point of going tubeless. Like you want to see all those holes, otherwise you're wasting money on stuff that's not going to do anything. Um, so, you know, my granddad always used to say, buy cheap, buy twice. <laughs> um, but I've done a bit of digging around for you uh, to see if you can buy something of a cheaper sealant. Um, you've mentioned muck off. So muck off is about 18 to 22 pounds, uh, British pounds. Um, sorry, I don't know euros um, for one litre. Um, and I did a bit of shopping around and you can buy car sealant for about 10 pounds uh, a litre. Now it might be thicker, thicker and heavier. It might not work as well um, in bike tyres, but it is still a sealant product depending um, on the brand and the quality. Um, and that would be about you know, half the price of Muckoff. Um, and I, I would just say, just think how much you're gonna be saving on tubes here. So I've done a little bit of maths here. Um, so, you know, 100 mils per tire for a 29er, for example. Uh, one liter is say 20 pounds. Uh, that's two pound per tire and inner tubes cost four pound. Uh, ago. So, you know what, unless you're sitting there and repairing all your tubes, um, then it should be cheaper than tubes. So, um, you know what, go for a cheaper sealant rather than condensed milk is my advice. Okay, so Westbrook Wellness Holistic Health uh, says, hashtag AskGMB and Tech, hey both, what is the optimal XC tire width? 2.0 to 2.4. What width is the wisest choice for us XC riders? Uh, with a little thinking emoji. Um, okay, so obviously I used to race XC and I'm familiar with people sticking to that little tiny platform and thinking, you know, it's like gonna cut through and be really fast and you're saving weight. Um, but personally, I think wider is better. Um, if you use the same sort of tension in a wider tire, so um, the equivalent PSI in a wider tire, you'd get um, a bigger volume and you get a bigger contact patch for traction. You also get um, a nice sort of uh, damping over the rough stuff, better traction, and also it's comfier. And um, I know you're probably shouting at the screen right now saying, well, I don't care about comfort, I just care about speed. But, you know, all of that judderiness from a narrow or a firm tire is just wasting your energy. And, you know, you're racing for an hour to an hour and a half, maybe more depending on what you're doing. Um, but you need that energy to go faster. So comfort is actually a good thing. Traction is a good thing. I would say go wider. You can always get a nice thin casing if you're worried about um, weight. Uh, but yeah, generally, um, better rolling compliance and better harshness to, um, you know, all of those little bumps are going to be little stopping points slowing you down. So if you roll over those better with nice damp tyres, then you're going to be going faster, which is what we want as an XC rider, no? Um, so give it a whirl, see what you think. I think it is better. <laughs> okay, so... Nino Vegas, hashtag AskGMBN Tech. Hey guys, 
I equipped my new bike with tubeless tires and it's the first time I've run tubeless. How do I stop sealant coming out of the valve when checking the tire pressure uh, with my pump? I already put the valve on the upper side of the wheel. So that's up here, is it? Um, so the sealant should not be in this part of the tire as gravity dictates, uh, but I still sprayed my new gauge with sealant. What am I doing wrong? Um, okay, so I can see you're thinking gravity is gonna pull the sealant down around the tire and not be up there, but if some sealant is up the top, uh, gravity might pull it down into the valve itself. So I would actually go the other way around and have your valve at the bottom so gravity can pull it clear out of the valve. And then what I would do before you put your gauge on uh, is just give it a little jet of air with your finger, just hit it so that air comes out. A bit of sealant might come out as well, but at least that's not going on your new air pressure checker or your new pump gauge. So um, do that, see if that works for you. Uh, Morton Paulson, hope I've pronounced that right. Ask GMBN Tech, thanks for a great channel. Thumbs up emoji, thank you. Um, I have a RockShox Judy Silver 130mm travel fork, but when I try to push all the way, I hardly pass 100mm. Uh, so how do I know that it is a 130 fork? Um, there's a lot of things in there. Uh, if your pressure is too, you know, too high for you to be able to push it. Um, so the more air you have in that fork, the more it will ramp up because air will start to compress and you'll get to a point where it gets really, really firm and you can't push it all the way through. Um, so you don't want to bottom out um, just by pushing down. That would uh, signal to me that you might be too soft. So it's not necessarily a problem that it's not going all the way down and bottoming out when you're just pushing. Um, but if you wanna check that you're getting all of your pressure, uh, the way to do it is to let all of the air out and see uh, how far it goes down. Now, it's important to note that uh, if I get some forks, um, that if you were to let all of the air out, this may not come all the way down to this. It doesn't mean you're not getting all of the travel. So what you wanna do is get a, an O-ring if you've got one, or a really gentle piece of string to tie it around there, let all the air out, let the O-ring or your string move up, and then measure that and see if it's 130 mils of travel. Because 130 is the amount that the fork travels, not how long this stanchion is. So that's a good checker. And if you find that there's not 130 mils in there, you're only getting 100, then there could be something wrong with the fork that's stopping it. Um, and that way, you know, you need to maybe go and take it to a suspension specialist and get it checked out. Okay, so big chunky lardas. <laughs> Hi there. My wife has a 2019 Cube Stereo. It's a two by 11 speed with race face, uh, 175 mil cranks. Um, having now worn them out, she's looking to upgrade the drivetrain and change the cranks to 165. Uh, but this brings one big question. How do you find out what bottom bracket to use uh, and which cranks are compatible? Um, and also, is this an ideal time to change from two by to one by 12? Lots of questions there, uh, Larry. Um, so, okay, let's break this down. Um, bottom bracket, yes, it's a bit of a minefield. Um, now you can kind of work out whether you've got a uh, press fit or not by just looking down at the bottom bracket area and a like a BB30 external uh, screw-in bottom bracket, you'll be able to see it. It'll be like a little um, ring right up to your frame. Uh, if you can't see anything or if you take off the crank and it's just sort of flushed the frame and you know the bottom bracket frame is really oversized, that's a pressed fit. It's pressed into uh, the frame. 
Um, but sometimes it, it's not even as simple as identifying two bottom brackets. There are others within that kind of bracket. Um, so my advice to you uh, is either take it to a bike shop and get them to identify it because you're going to need to take it out and have a proper look to work it out or you're going to have to go online find the uh, model so the cube stereo c62 race um, online and find the original spec you might see that the bottom bracket uh, is listed in there so you can get a new one um, but you know if it's still working don't replace it you don't need to um, but you do need to find out what the bracket the bottom bracket is to put a new crank in so that's presumably why you're asking um, and yes uh, what cranks are compatible that can be a bit of a, a mindful too you want to find out um, you found out your bottom bracket that's fine but you've also got to find out kind of what the chain line is for your frame as well and you're also talking about going one by 12 so that's another thing you've gone from two chain rings to one and you want to get the right chain line for your frame as well um, and that can be a bit of a minefield um, Honestly, it's, there's too many variables for me to give you advice online and it's going to be a real minefield for you to find it out. I would take it to a local bike shop if you don't mind doing that because they're the experts. They're going to work out what that chain line is that you need, what the bottom bracket is, and they can advise you on whether 1x12 would actually be suitable for your frame as well. There's, there's a lot of factors in there, Larry. So... Um, uh, yeah, go and speak to some experts and chat about the bike while you're there. So Tim Faulkner MTB says, I am finally going tubeless as I have some awesome Halo Vortex wheels. Nice. Uh, but my current floor pump can't seat the tire bead. Do I need to buy a new bike pump um, or can I get by using a charge tank? Uh, with my current floor pump to seat tires, or can I use CO2? Um, yeah, the short answer is yes to all of those. Um, you can use any of them. A CO2 pump um, will get it onto the rim. So basically, you know, sometimes you need to shock the tire on there with a big jet of um, air. So a CO2 will do that. Um, and a charge tank will do that because a charge tank is basically just a refillable, reusable uh, CO2 canister, if you will. Um, and yes, you can buy a new pump that already has a charger built into it. But if you have some sentimental attachment to your pump um, and you don't want to buy a new one, uh, maybe a charge tank is good for you and it's more affordable. Um, you can actually build one yourself out of an old um, two litre bottle as well. If, uh, we might have done one of those online, so have a look for that if you want a cheap option too. Um, moving on, Matteo Tassone, probably pronouncing that right, apologies. Um, hashtag Ask GMBN Tech. I have a 11 speed SRAM cassette, 11 to 42, and I'd like to have a bit more gear ratio. Uh, what is better between changing the entire drivetrain to a 12 speed? or swapping out the front chain ring um, from a 30 to say a 24 or a 26. Um, so there's a couple of things in there. Um, obviously the benefits of just swapping your chain ring is that a chain ring is gonna be more affordable than swapping an entire drivetrain because we're talking about a new cassette a new derailleur and a new shifter. So obviously the price of that is going to be a bit more than just changing your chain ring. Um, also, uh, gear ratios can be a bit complicated um, because if you go bigger on the back and smaller on the front and trying to work out whether going smaller on the front and leaving the cassette the same or, or staying the same on the front and getting a bigger cassette is better it can be a little bit complicated. So what you wanna do is go online um, and search for a gear ratio calculator. And then you can actually put in your smallest and your biggest uh, ring on your cassette and your ring up front and work 
work out um, what is actually the easiest gear you can achieve. And then you can put in um, an alternative, like a 12 speed, one by, for example, and work out whether that is actually easier for you or not. Um, the problem with changing chain rings, you've mentioned a 24 and a 26, some frames won't actually allow you to go that small. Um, so you might want to check that first and then get on that gear ratio calculator and work out which is actually better for you or which is easier. Okay, so that was my last question today. So I hope these have been useful for all of you watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to stop by next Monday for more hashtag AskGMBNTechs.